Well, Larry, if I knew that you were from Canada originally, I had forgotten it. Right. So tell me about your family and its background in racing, because you've got an extensive background in, in motorsports. Well, I've done it a long time and come across it honestly because my dad was into it. Um, very young age, 12, 13, I was I'm saying building cars. Obviously, my dad was there at my side helping me, but yeah, yeah. that's what we did. He raced. He was a heck of a racer, just a super good driver. So I just kind of got infected with the disease early. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, it just went from there. You know, we raced in Canada for a long time, won a lot of races, and then got a call from Richard Childress one day from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and he said, would you come and work for me? <laughs> Thought it was a joke. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, how long have I got to decide? And he said, I need to know something in two weeks. And I just bought a little house back in Victoria, B.C., Canada. And I just bought a Z28 Camaro. And I put it on hold. And I just bought Dad out of our Pollard Automotive business in Victoria about two months before that. Oh, wow. You know, I was just kind of yeah. – but racing was racing we had to do it kind of thing so i went back to dad and i says dad i says uh not that deal <laughs> I, got, I got this deal here would you mind going to work for me for you know because he wanted to retire yeah just for maybe six months i don't know i got this deal a guy from winston salem called richard chill or something i'm gonna go see if i can work that out and of course dad was such a awesome guy he said yeah yeah go ahead your son deal go ahead yeah. you know yeah so uh I took off and I gave my Camaro to my mom to drive, <laughs> and I <laughs> and I was fixing up this old house, so it was worked out good. I just was in the midst of selling it, so sold that. Dad looked after the business, and I told Dad, I said, "Now listen, my payments on this thing are one hundred and fifty-six dollars. I remember it to this day. All you just make expenses, whatever you make, it's yours. So yeah. that's what we did." <laughs> Now, Victoria is right across the bay from Washington State. How often did you go back and forth? Between? A lot. Okay. All right. Yeah, that was uh, our racing in the states, Monroe, Washington, Yakima, Washington, South Sound, Skagit Speedway, Speedway, which was dirt, but we ran there twice with the late models. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of our entrance. And then, of course, every Man, for five, six years straight, I think we, we ran Riverside in January forever with the the Winston Cup race, you know, which had the 200 before and then the Cup race Sunday. So, yeah, the West Coast was kind of home for us, you know. Now, how would you go about getting a car across the bay on a ferry, or how did that mm -hmm. work? Yep, Vancouver Island was a secluded island. We, you had to use a ferry to get off it. Yeah, yeah. And back in the day, it wasn't too bad. Now they say it just got incredibly expensive to put a, a trailer and a truck on the yeah. ferry and transport yeah. it. Yeah. So that was – every time you went anywhere, there was more expenses than any other place you went just because you had the ferry, you know yeah. what I mean, and you're so far away from everything. So it really had to take some planning to make it work out. Now, was some, was racing something that was fairly well accepted where you lived, or was it considered a little bit of an oddity? Vancouver Island was a race city it, really? for no more population than it had. Uh, a tremendous amount of turnout of cars. Like in Saturday night in the late 70s, there was always three, 3,500 people in the stands, and there was always a good car count. And we always said there must be something in the water here because – a lot of people had race cars and good race cars. We got, you know, Gary Kershaw, Roy Smith, and all the guys graduated. Billy Foster graduated from this little old flat three-eighths mile track in Victoria, Canada, you know. So uh, it was an amazing place for racing. Wow. At what point did you start driving? 13. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, there again, I'm going to say I built a car at 13. I get credit for it, but... My dad was there, but yeah. I, that's all we did was build a car, and we built two cars the same. And then I went to the racetrack, and they wouldn't let me run. I was 13. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to be 16. I said, okay, yeah. well, so we, my car was the choice of cars. So dad drove my car for one year in the stock car division, 
until they let me run the next year. So I started I actually started racing when I was before I was 15. You know, they said you got. Your, I was a pretty tall boy, so they said you got your license yet. <laughs> I said, Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Didn't have to show them. <laughs> you have a book out that is awesome about well, your you. family's history in racing and everything, and I got a lot of a lot of good little nuggets out of it. Yeah. Uh, if I read correctly, you were the valedictorian. Yes. Of your high school class. Yes, sir. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I just, that was a, you know, and, and when I got selected to do that or got one at whatever you do, I didn't think nothing to me. So, you know, you just, years later, you look at it and you say, wow. But when we won it, when, when I got selected, my law uh, professor, Mike Dunn, he, he knew that I was, you, you had a couple, three weeks before the, the ceremony, you know. So he said, let's go to the prison. I got a, I got a prison mate down there that was a scriptwriter for a lot of the prime ministers of Canada. He said, we'll sit down with him, and he'll give you some tips on it. So Mike Dunn and myself went to the – this is big security. He was in there for a while, but he was – I don't even remember his name. He was a really cool guy, but he was a writer of speeches. So we sat down And he him. was in prison? He was in prison, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we went in there, got to go in there, and we sat down with him for an hour, an hour and a half, and he gave me a bunch of tips on what to talk about, what not to talk about, how to present it. It was cool, man, you know, but, uh, and then like you say, years later, I got the picture at home, the valedictorian with the speech and all, and a copy of the speech, and it it takes a long time after that to go, man, that was pretty cool. You know, you got to address your graduating class, you know, and it was cool. Now, you said your law professor uh my law te- my, our law class teacher uh mike dunn he was he t- he taught our law class in high school you had a law class yes oh yeah really yeah yeah, yeah you could select that as one of your courses and it was law uh 12 and mike dunn was the teacher of law you know so it was pretty cool deal you got a pretty good introduction into the the law world and it uh, you know i i took up to that pretty good so that's how the whole deal worked out man i thought i was just interviewing a dumb race car driver <laughs> <laughs> well, i am not all right <laughs> give me the gas pedal there buddy <laughs> now was that something that you were considering law no or was that just a class it was you? selected you know what i mean okay. it was it yeah. was out there and i and i've always had an interest in it but no it was definitely not a destination i'm yeah um, I was a racer. I just, golly, bum. I didn't go to school dances, didn't do this, did that. I worked on the race car. Yeah, that's all we did, my dad and I. And uh, dad, you know, didn't have a lot of money. And I don't know how in the world he raised three daughters and two race cars and me, you know what I mean? Yeah. But we did everything ourselves. I mean, we, we had to. You know, we had two race cars. He built a trailer to pull behind his little Ford pickup and he got a bunch of uh, quarter by two band iron from a guy gave him, and I swear to God, he created a, a gooseneck trailer out of this quarter by one uh, two band iron, and we we hauled one of the race cars on it. He was just amazing man. Just he yeah. could just come up with stuff and just do stuff for at way under budget you know what i mean and that's the way we did it mom made our uniforms she sewed all the uniforms if we went to vernon or langley bc to race she packed a lunch and you know we that's we ate sandwiches you know just it was just we didn't think nothing of it that's just the way it was it was just going racing with family and it was all good you know what i mean just yeah. it was all good now was your dad full-time in racing no he okay. he worked at a garage um and then when he when we first moved to Victoria in 60, 1966, I think, he got a job as a mechanic at a, a gas station and then went over to another gas station and Mel Marshall and his brother Jim, and they raced. So, wow. man, he's back in it because he raced back in Vermillion, Alberta. And that he, no, he, and then he became a, a sheet metal, I'm going to say specialist because it was because he did all in Victoria, BC. They got these beautiful uh, dome roofs, and they're all 
copper. And Dad had a knack for doing this copper work, and he could build these roofs for the – it was Smith & Addison Roofing. It was the name of the company, but he had the – he looked after the copper uh, – Making the coffered eaves and the drifts and the and the trimming on the thing and and so he worked, that's what he did you know he just till he retired. Now, what was the goal as your career started progressing? Were you always looking to go Winston Cup racing, or were you content to stick to Victoria and the area and Washington and Yakima and and all those tracks? What what was your goal? At that point. You know, it, I, that's a heck of a question because at the time, just a race. I, I don't think okay. I ever sat back and said, man, one day I'm going to do this. I just, every class we got involved in, it was the next step. You try to do the best you can. At never a goal of I want to run here or there, just wanted to run. And then when I got to the call from Richard Childress in 81, my goal still didn't change i just wanted to be involved in racing i was having a blast working on race cars and being a cup crew and then in 83 you know richard petty calls you and says i'd like to get involved in our team here would you would you kind of come and i said well i'm from canada here's a little old guy from canada that loves race and just starstruck and richard petty calls you and said he wants to be involved in your team I felt so bad for Richard Childers to, to leave him after one year, but I, again, yeah. a guy from Canada that yeah. doesn't know anybody yeah. down yeah. here gets asked. You kind of got to do it, yeah. and I and I that was a wonderful relationship with Richard and I. We just then he after the first time we went to practice at Daytona, he asked me to be crew chief with Robin Pemberton, and well, you're old, you know this is <laughs> this is pretty awesome right here. So yeah. then we go win three or four races and end up yeah. fourth in points. It was it was pretty awesome. Again, here's this guy from Canada that doesn't know anybody. Yeah. But he just wanted to race. That's all I thought about. Didn't have a girlfriend, just wanted to race. And so you put your heart and soul into it and it works. It'll go. If you really want to do something bad enough, just dig down deep and you gotta sacrifice some things, but don't yeah. be looking for the big picture. Just yeah. Yeah. do the day, do yeah. the best you can, learn all you can, and go. <laughs> That's the way I looked at it. Well, you were still in Canada before you made the move here to yes. North Carolina. How closely were you able to follow what was going on in Winston Cup, or was that even a consideration Yeah, as far as news and that kind of thing? You know, once you get down here and see how much is going on, we didn't get much of it at all because we saw yeah. the Firecracker, Firecracker 400 and the Daytona 500. We thought there was four races a year, basically. You know <laughs> what I mean? So, no, I'd say yeah. – it, and and now today, obviously, with the media, it they, they're they weekly. Who's right. who's changing tires for this? You know yeah. what I mean? They yeah. know what's going on. Back then, going to Winston-Salem, I don't know Richard Chill, never seen him, looking for a guy in a in – a, in a, an orange jacket, no, a purple jacket is going to meet me at the thing. So, no, we didn't. You know, like when we raced the Riverside, the only reason why I got to, to uh, hooked up with them was we were parked in the garage beside um, Earnhardt and Childress in 81 or yeah. 2, I guess, something like that. Yeah. And we were parked beside them with our old junk from Canada, you know, and Dick Misley stuff. And I shouldn't say that. I'll take that back, Dick. It's not junk. But we – he did a lot with nothing, old Dick Misley. But he went to this race every year. And then uh, Gary Nelson helped us. And uh, so, anyways, when Richard was starting a new team, he called Gary Nelson and said, man, I need some guys that can do work on a race car. You know, but back then you didn't have but five or six guys in the whole team. So you kind of had to do a little bit of everything. Yeah. So Gary Nelson told Richard Childress, says, get this guy from Canada. He can change tires, he can work on a car, build motors, and he can drive them. So that's how that whole deal started was the f- initial phone call from Richard Childress was, I was talking to Gary Nelson, he said you might be interested. That's how the whole deal started. You were working on Roy Smith's crew at that mm-hmm. time? Yes. When you got the call and everything? Yes. Uh-huh. Now, was it difficult for you to 
was it difficult for you to balance working on a crew with the desire to drive yourself? How, how did you balance that out? What, what was your priority? Were you content to work on cars or were you still wanting to drive? Obviously still wanted to drive, but knew I had not the resources to drive. Okay. Yeah. So when I went with Roy to Riverside and races in Monroe, Washington, we raced there a lot with him. Um, we were, Andy Young and I were the tire changers, and we had these pit crew contests all the time. Every race track you went to, you had a pit crew contest. Well, we would just smoke them. <laughs> well, for some reason, we just had, we could do that. But no, so when I was, I was content with, just going to the races, changing tires, and just enjoying it, you know. 